We'll run through this really informally, line by line, or section by section, uh, and try to get through all this code. If you have some experience with NeoPixel code, LED stuff, that should be pretty self-explanatory. All of the Bluetooth code here is straight from one of the example files that came from Intel for this project. And if you don't have any idea what you're looking at, um, this might not be the best place to start. I do have a couple of videos on my main channel about getting started with Arduino. Um, check that out if you're interested. But we're going to jump right into this. I'm just going to show you what each line does or each little section does. Uh, and it's actually been a couple of weeks since I've looked at this code, so be patient with me as I get through it. Up here at the top, we're going to include two uh, libraries that are installed into the Arduino uh, IDE. One is the Intel Curie library, and that's just the BLA. BLE is Bluetooth, so this is just the Bluetooth file. Uh, this is the Adafruit NeoPixel library. Uh, this is just some stuff that goes along with that. Okay, so I'm setting up 60 pixels, 60 uh, LEDs here, and I'm setting them to pin number three. There's really not a lot of setup because all we have is the Arduino and LEDs hooked up. This is the initialization for the NeoPixels. You just tell it the order of RGB. Some of them are GRB or kind of weird stuff like that. Give it the pin number, which we defined up here. And then uh, down here, I'm setting an array of two different colors. So blue and white, I've got it listed down here at the end. And those are just for the different teams. So if you want to change the color of the team colors, this is the line that you do it in. If that's all you need, you're good to go. Uh, this stuff is the setup for uh, the app that I'm using, BLE101. There's a link to it on the main video in the description. And uh, this lets that app connect to, well, uh, this broadcasts uh, an address so that other devices connect to it. So that app is connecting to this address. You don't have to change this or really even understand it. It just has to be here for it to work. So this part right here is actually talking, is what defines the controls that are in the Bluetooth app that I'm using. Uh, the names here are kind of preset things. They're not really anything I can easily change without writing a custom app, and I don't want to do that. So essentially, I just took three controls for each team, and they get defined later as to what they do. I used these 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 because they were sequential, they were easy to use. And then down here, I'm going to define those to a pin, and I'm going to use the same number so it's really easy to follow. So um, basically those are the characteristics, they're the things that get changed, and the things that are being looked for uh, where changes happen from the UI in the app. And so when it sees something change with this name, then it reacts accordingly lower down in the code. Uh, I'm defining some character numbers here. This is just a simple array. I'm setting up the initial score, which is zero to zero. Um, I have a, this is actually leftover. It doesn't even need to be there anymore. <laughs> and then uh, some old values. We set up these, uh, these integers and they're basically this name equals six this name equals seven and those get used right here so we set up um, uh, areas for each one of the controls in the UI in the app and they get filled in with the first one uses this variable which goes to six the second one uses this variable which goes to seven uh, essentially you don't really need to understand why this is here yet. It doesn't make any sense yet. Uh, the character offset is the number. So each number on screen or on the scoreboard has 15 LEDs in it. And so this is the offset. So if we want to say we want to talk to the first uh, first number, the first digit on the scoreboard, the offset is zero because it's one LEDs one through 15. The second one has an offset of one character of 15. So it's 16 to 30, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, that gets used later on and may make a little more sense down there. This is the array of instructions for each character. So the number zero is displayed by turning them on and off in this order. Um, and if this was laid out up here like this, it would make a little bit more sense, but that's not valid code. But if you look at this as a picture rather than numbers, you see that this is zero. There's ones around the outside, that means they're turned on. The ones in the middle are turned off. 
uh, so that makes a zero. So basically I took this image for each character, flattened it out into a list, and stuck it here. So each drawing is written out in this list right here. So if you wanted to make letters instead of numbers, you would just have to draw them in this format, flatten them out to a list, and put them in like this. And you could actually write words on the same setup. So for the setup function, uh, just do some, some serial communication so we can see it in the IDE. Uh, we turn on the pixels, get them started, and then run through all of the pins on the app. Uh, well, actually, it, right here we're setting the pins on the Arduino, all the connection pins, and uh, and just telling them that we're gonna we're gonna write to them, setting them as output so we can control LEDs with them by sending information out, and we set their value to low. This is some setup for the Bluetooth stuff. Um, this is the name that's going to get displayed in the app. So when the app searches for the device, it's going to see this. Um, and that's necessary for that particular app that I'm using. This is a required name that it's looking for. Uh, setting up some the ports for each one of the six buttons. Again, connecting them to an attribute, which we defined up here at the top. These things. Um, then we set up event handlers. An event handler, if you're not familiar with code, is basically anytime anything happens, you're defining what to do. So anytime the first button uh, has any new information from the Bluetooth that's written, the handler is this. So anytime it gets new information, it calls this. That gets defined later further down. Then we just, that's all the setup for the Bluetooth, and then we actually just start the Bluetooth here. Uh, we set numbers, so we set team zero to value score zero, team one to score zero. Uh, so you can, that's like the initial score setup. And then the loop is where everything happens on a regular basis. Uh, there's actually not a lot of code in the loop, but it's running through looking at the Bluetooth connection uh, it's pulling, it's, it's trying to see if it's connected, and um, it does a little timeout thing here. This really doesn't matter. There's not a whole lot happens here. It's just Bluetooth kind of stuff. What really happens, what action is taken, is these listeners. So anytime something happens in the app, these things get triggered. And if we look down further, uh, there's some more functions down here that, that are in use. So. Uh, if we want to set a number to the screen, that's what this function does. Uh, we want to toggle a location, which is turning an individual LED on or off. That's just kind of a convenience function. Uh, we want to set digital value for on and off um, within the app. So setting the control. Um, this checks to see if they have changed, if the values have changed. And then those listeners that I was talking about are defined down here. And really all they do is they say, if listener one is triggered, then call the set score function and take team zero, the first team, and subtract one from it. So this is taking the whole score down by one. The next one is team zero, reset the score to zero. Uh, the third one is team zero, increase the score by one. And so that's, you know, these are all team one, team zero, sorry. And then these are the second team, team one. That's really where the work is, is done. So it, all of these call the set score function, which is right down here. And it takes a team, which team you're talking about, and the new value. Um, so if the value coming in is zero, then we reset the score. That's, that's our reset button. Otherwise, we want to increase the number, the current score, by whatever we sent in, which in this case up here would be negative 1 or 1. Um, and then there's a little check here. If the score is less than 0, if we somehow get to a negative 1, reset it to 0. So we can't get negative numbers on here, which is good. Uh, then we just record that new score into the current, like, our settings. Uh, so we know we have a, a, a track of what's a variable storing the current score. And then we actually display it. And so set score creates the number, puts it into a variable, and then set number 
actually displays it on screen. This stuff is just to put it into the, uh, the serial monitor so you can actually see it if you're in the IDE. So this actually doesn't need to be there long term. It's more for testing. So the last kind of thing here is that it sets the number. We'll go up and look at that function. And in here, it's which side we're talking about and the number that needs to be shown uh, on that side. And this is probably the more confusing part and I'm not entirely sure that I can explain it well. Um, but basically, you, you take this display number that comes in. Um, well, first you have to figure out where to put it. And so you know it's side. So let's, let's talk about the uh, second player. We'll, we'll use that as our side. So that second player is player one which is a little confusing, but the first player is player zero, okay? So if this comes in as the number one, it's saying one times the offset, which we said was 15 at the very beginning, times two. So one times 15 is 15, times two is 30. And so if you're talking about 60 LEDs, 30 is right in the middle. That is the beginning of the second player's list of LEDs. Okay, so that's telling us basically just where to start writing these things. Um, this is a way to divide our number uh, by 10 to see if the first digit of the two numbers actually has anything. Most likely it doesn't. Well, initially it won't. It'll be a zero. So if you if the score is five, you div just, um, divide five by 10, it's, it's going to not going to be an integer and so it's going to show zero on the screen basically uh sorry this is not divide but uh, modulo so basically these set up the first character these set up the second character tells us what number needs to be displayed there and then we actually display it by going through from zero to 15 so each led on each number and then we set that uh, whether it needs to be on or off. And this calls the toggle location, which is down here. And the toggle location is expecting which side we're talking about, which individual LED location within that side, and whether it's on or off. So it goes uh, to the, that specific LED and just sets it either to black, which is 000, zero as black, or it sets it to a color which is defined way back at the very beginning when we had blue and white for the team colors. So, like I said, this set number is probably the most confusing part of the, it's, it's the least obvious piece of code, I think. Uh, the rest of it is not in a particularly useful order, but it does work. And I tried to name things in a way that made a little bit of sense so anyway I can't support this code I can't like help answer questions because I just literally don't have time but this code is here for you to use modify do whatever you want to with with it and um, if all you want to do is change the color of the LEDs that's in line 12 just change these to an RGB value this one's white um, you could probably actually just put the word blue in there and it would work as well. I'm not exactly sure. But if that's all you want to change, do this, upload it. Should be good to go as long as you're using an Arduino 101 board. I hope that was more helpful than confusing. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys.